special presentation of LOBN with archaeologists Dr. Lawrence Garrity and Dr. Doug Clark, Excavating the Bible. Welcome to this edition of Excavating the Bible, What Archaeology Can Teach Us, a program dedicated to exploring the contributions of archaeology in the Middle East to our understanding of and appreciation for the Bible. I'm Doug Clark, uh, director of the Center of Archaeology at La Sierra University, and joining me to talk about our subject today of biblical connections with Tel El Ameri Jordan, uh, an ancient site, is uh, Dr. Larry Garrity, who is a former president of La Sierra University and the founding director of this project and a co-host of this program. <laughs> so, Larry, here we are to think about archaeology and the Bible and what we can learn. So let's talk first of all about this project. We don't want to spend a lot of time with it. We want to get to these biblical connections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this project, where it began, how it began, what motivated its beginning. Well, we probably need to go back to our teacher, Dr. Siegfried Horn, mm -hmm. who decided that he wanted to uh, excavate in the Middle East. And uh, he was especially interested in the dating of the Exodus. And he mm -hmm. said, let me find something that would uh, relate to that. And uh, after looking at several different sites, he settled on Heshbon first because it's mentioned in the Exodus uh, account. And Repeatedly, story. actually, it really is. throughout those stories as right. they keep showing up in right. the Old Testament. So we started in 1968 uh, at Heshbon, and uh, our plan was to go every other year. When we completed our uh, work at Heshbon in the 70s, uh, we uh, were in the process of looking for another site. And uh, at Heshbon, the site we were working at, we went back only to 1200 BC. And uh, we said, let's find a site that complements that and goes back even further. And that's how we picked Umeri, the site we want to talk about today, because from the surface finds, we discovered that it did go back into the second millennium and even earlier. And even earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, and the goal here was to expand that chronology. So we've got chronology. Right. We have other <laughs> kinds of goals. What, what, what motivated this project? I mean, I, I joined in the Hespan days, the Heshbon days, right. uh, and was part of the origins of, of a Mary in 1984. Right. What drove it? I think this is important as we're thinking about the Bible and archaeology. What sorts of motivations drove this group of, this group of us right. as we were doing that? Well, we, we were fairly confident that Heshbon, the site we were working at, didn't go back far enough to, uh, to account for the entire biblical story about it. Uh, Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who was at Heshbon, we couldn't find him or his remains or the remains of his people at the site of Heshbon. So we said, if we can find a site that is earlier than that, perhaps we'll fill in parts of the picture that we don't understand right now. And so I think that was one of the motivations. But as, as archaeologists who work in a scientific way, we said, let's get as, as, as yes. a long an exposure of human occupation in central Jordan as we can find. And this site promised to take us back so we would go from at least the third millennium BC clear down to medieval times AD. So we had a real long stretch of history we could And this today. became known as the Madaba Plains, Plains project, project, which now has another site too. That's right. But the goal then would have been to extend this to, to make this the, 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 the region actually. That's right. This long chronology all the way back to, well, 3000 BC at least, at right. our site, uh, and then into and through New Testament times. So we really did have, with this region, right. biblical history. We really That's had right. all of these biblical right. connections. Yeah. Yeah. How much was the, the, the religious factor. Okay, you've talked about Bible. <laughs> How much was the faith side of this? Because we don't do this just for science. No. We don't do it just for history and Bible. Right. But there's a faith dimension here. So there is. how much of that was driving yeah. this Well, you, you and I are both uh, Old Testament scholars. We're interested in uh, Old Testament history. We're interested in how archaeology elucidates that history. So definitely we were there because of our interest in Bible and religion and the connections with archaeology and so on. And uh, yet we wanted to do this work scientifically accurately without imposing our beliefs on the evidence. 
And I think that that's something that uh, we have become noted for, right. doing good scientific work, right. not imposing our beliefs and what we find, but finding things that nevertheless did relate to right. the Bible and the right. biblical story in exciting ways. Right. And not trying to prove no. any particular part no. of the Bible. That's, no. that's kind of an old-fashioned uh, way. Uh, some people still want to right. use this apologetically, but, um, but the goal was to see what we could learn about the, the time, the place, the people of right. biblical history. Whatever we find, we're happy for, and we look for ways to uh, to relate it to the right. whole story. Okay, yeah. well let's put it into context then. Okay. And maybe if we could come over to the screen over here and, and look at this because Good. Good. Our, our first map here is a, <laughs> a, a picture of the study area. Right. And we talked about these different places. Um, Hespan or Heshbon, Biblical mm -hmm. Heshbon. Uh, here is Tel el -Ameri. Here is Tel Jalul, uh, another site in the project. Andrews University is excavating. Uh, and it's in central Jordan, so it's in a part of the country. People ask, is this biblical? Is this part mm. of the biblical world? Very much, much so. so. How, right. how, would, how would you answer that Absolutely, question? because we have the stories of David. Remember how he fought the Ammonites mm. and took the crown, and, and uh, that's all there. And so this is the Ammonite territory during the Iron Age, or what we would consider the uh, time of the monarchy, both the uh, united monarchy and the divided mm. monarchy. Mm -hmm. Israel was always uh, uh, fighting the Ammonites, mm -hmm. their their enemies. And so, if we could go south in uh, on the Jordan side of this, right. we would go into Moab, Moabite territory, right. and right. then if we go further south, Edomite, Edomite territory, yeah. mm -hmm. and then of course Israelite and Judean right. on this side. And of the higher world. up, beyond uh, the circular area that is white there in our uh, map, you had Gilead which also relates to biblical story. Right. Well, so let's look at a few more of these slides, okay. kind of orient ourselves, Good. Uh, and we'll make the biblical connections, at Good. least some of them as we go. Good. I actually have a couple more sessions to talk more in depth. So this is a kind of an overview. Right. Um, and this particular slide is We're an looking overview. at an aerial view of the site, uh, Mary, that we want to talk about. And you see to the left is the main highway that goes from Amman to uh, the airport uh, south of town. And uh, clear over on the right, you see some trees, which are at the edge of the national uh, park, a national forest. And this site is ideally suited today, in modern terms, with all that transportation, just as it was in ancient times. People coming from the south came right by this site. And it was the first site that they came to that they could protect that also had water. So that's probably why people settled here. And the water source is just off of the picture down here. You, right. you can see where these lines come down to the base here. Right. And there's a water source capped over. Actually, that's part of it right there at the base right. of the uh, photo. Point out um, some of the digging areas that we have right on the top yes, of the Yes, and so we've been excavating in several places. Uh, you see some activity over here. This is the major area. It's the western part of the whole site have gone down several layers, several mm -hmm. occupational layers, all the way from the from the bottom, from the bedrock, about 2400 BC, and then coming all the way up until, we have a couple of things from um, AD, but not much. So, so most how, of this how, how is much BC. Would you, how many layers would you say we had of civilizations we, we that can, we came down to? We can <laughs> mark out now 21 layers. Isn't that amazing? When you go yeah. all the way down, and it's about 25 feet deep. Um, mm -hmm, it's not mm -hmm. one per foot, but anyway, right. it's about 21 layers. And then we have some more excavation over here, and then you'll see some over on this side as well, and then down here. And we'll look at a couple of those places Good. as we just kind of explore the possibilities. This is another way of looking at the site from the east, isn't it? We're looking at, you can see what we call a tell, or a mound that's been built up through time, layer after layer of civilization. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think uh, one of the earliest things we'll look at here comes from way down here on at the lower slopes. Right, um, right. People think about most of the work happening on the on the upper part of the tell, but this was a a living, breathing <laughs> system for life. Right, uh, right. And and it, it actually occupied all the way down to the base of the tell and the surrounding region. This is how archaeologists look at it, right? <laughs> right. Okay, so we, we've got to be um, organized and we have to uh, draw these things. And so these represent those fields that we excavated before. And in terms of biblical connections, just by way of introduction, we have them all over the tell. We do. Um, primarily, since we spent most of our time, they are on the western side here. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a chance to look at those in, in a moment. 
<laughs> the dolmen. Um, this is the earliest thing that we found at the site, mm -hmm. isn't it? It is. Yeah. And you can see those massive stones uh, on each side of this installation and on the back. And originally there would have been a, a stone that would have covered the top, right. but that has disappeared. Tell us what we found in that. Yes, and to give an idea of scale, here's a meter stick, so it's about a yard. Inside of this tomb um, were found portions of 20 skeletons mm. and uh, a number of vessels, almost as many vessels by which we could date it, mm -hmm. and then some beads and a few other things mm -hmm. as well. Um, so when the Bible talks about gathering your, the, 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 the bones of the fathers, um, and right. people joining them. We're looking at an, insta an installation like this where multiple burials take place right. over time. And these are secondary burials. Secondary burials. People died elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, the flesh had occasion to rot off of the bones. Mm -hmm. One setting, a cave, mm -hmm. typically caves. Mm -hmm. And then they would bring their bones. They would gather the bones to their ancestors mm -hmm. and actually celebrate them. There were places around that they would have for uh, maybe annual, maybe mm -hmm. regular sorts mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. uh, of occasions. Mm -hmm. um, this comes from a little bit later. So we've just moved from 3000 BC to about 1400 BC. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the end of what we would call the Late Bronze Age in archaeological terms. And uh, people for many years have suggested that there was no settlement during the Late Bronze Age. And here we find an installation that uh, in places is, what, almost 10 feet mm -hmm. tall, the walls mm -hmm. preserved. So a very dramatic uh, discovery that illustrates that, yes, there was settled occupation here coming out of the uh, Late Bronze Age into the Iron Age. Right. In that transitional period, right about 1200 B.C., right. a little bit before, right. a little bit after. Right. Right. So again, we'll have occasion to talk more about this. Mm -hmm. we, will, we will have, uh, as one of our guests, the person who excavated <laughs> this, and he can talk about that Roman right. side. Right. Now this one actually pictures a couple, of, uh, a couple of us, I mean like you and me here. It does. So tell it us does. about this one, Larry. Well, this is a, uh, a house, a four-room house, and uh, I'm the one with the blue there standing in Here's one of the Larry. long rooms, that's right. And then next to it, where the meter stick is for scale, there's another room. And uh, then you're, you're standing, or you're sitting, rather, on the uh, wall that uh, separates those two rooms. You point yourself out there, yes. right there. And then there's, a, there's the a doorway that goes back to a room in the back. And standing, or sitting in the front, is Dr. Larry Herr, who teaches up at uh, Canadian University College, and that's uh, maybe the animal pen that he's sitting on the edge of. Right, right. This house, it turns out, is the signature discovery. Okay, mm -hmm. so I helped to <laughs> excavate it, so I'm biased here, but it, uh, but I think most people have recognized it. Absolutely, as, it's as been published in several uh, articles and uh, books and so on as mm -hmm. an illustration of the kind of house that uh, the Israelites lived in. Right, this mm -hmm. is an early Israelites, early People Ammonite. that become Ammonites <laughs> right. and Moabites, um, right. both sides of the Jordan have right. this kind of house. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the earliest of probably between 150 uh, and 200 that have been mm -hmm. excavated. And um, We know it had a second story too, didn't it? We, so it we do know it had story. a second story. Yeah. So we're going to come back to this too. Right. I mean, this right. is this overview. Right. And so we're doing <laughs> a, 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 quick, a quick tour. Mm -hmm. a, a closer up of the western part of the site. And you know the the main trench there at the bottom of the uh, of the photograph yes. is uh, it goes up the the glacis or the rampart of the right. city. That's uh, where you're pointing it out, right up to the uh, wall that, that went around the top of the the mound. And then once you get inside that wall, then we're beginning to excavate uh, the the homes and the installations and the buildings that were there. That late Bronze Age building from about 1400, 1350 mm -hmm. BC is here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the four room house that we were talking about is right here. Mm -hmm. So it's a couple hundred years later than this one. But all of these are part of a village um, that extended around the site. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. it was a fairly good size. Maybe 300 people lived mm -hmm. there, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. they, it wasn't hugely populated, but this certainly gives us an idea. If you think biblically, time of the judges, we're talking this kind of house. That's right. So yeah. that's what we're excavating. Yeah. Larry, uh, you are a <laughs> specialist in ancient inscriptions. Well, that's, that, this was a very exciting find, and it happened right at the beginning, didn't it, of our project there at Amerian. And this uh, 
uh, the, you can't see a scale there, but it's about as big as your thumbnail. So it uh, was a little blob of clay that probably sealed uh, the, uh, a, a little narrow uh, entrance to a bottle or something like that. And then they put their seal in it, uh, and we see the seal impression that is photographed there. And it's in three different uh, sections. The top section and the bottom section have it's writing in it. Start from there here. There you go, right? And there's a letter there's here. There's a letter there. And a letter there. here. And then and it at continues the bottom, down right. at the bottom. And then in the center is a winged uh, beetle. And on either side is a, uh, a, a standard uh, that like a torch or something with a, a crescent uh, moon above mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all, all of these uh, symbols represent Ammonite royalty. And uh, in fact, the inscription uh, mentions the name of an Ammonite king there at the bottom uh, on the left. And we were so excited, we thought maybe we had discovered a brand new Ammonite king name because we have lists of Ammonite kings and this king's uh, name was not among them. But we hadn't read our Bibles carefully enough. Mm -hmm. Turns out that Jeremiah 40 tells the story about this very king and how he relates to the period of Jeremiah. So this was the first extra biblical proof, we can say, of the existence of this particular king whose uh, uh, seal uh, we found, right. the, the, or the, at least right. the servant of the right. king. Right. We found the seal, his seal. Important biblical connection. Very and important. when we come back to this later on, we'll see the other kinds of seals. I mean, they're yeah. all over the place, right. these kinds of right. seal impressions. Yeah. A couple <laughs> of, of slides here, and then we want to move to some objects, but a couple okay. of slides of the technology that we're using today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Larry, this is after the time of your right. regular Right, you introduced this there. to the site. Um, we, different types of technologies for photography, um, drones, these uh, <laughs> hectocopters and quadrocopters and so on are now yeah. being used for cameras to support cameras to take these pictures. Um, we're also using electronic devices, iPads, iPods. There's so much digital now. We used to take notes. If you, in fact, I saw in a museum in Turkey the original notes of excavations at Troy. Wow. And they're just paragraphs. This is what we did today. This is how we <laughs> discovered it. Um, all the way through fairly sophisticated note taking to, uh, for computerization to everything digital. We've, we've gone digital and that's been fun. Uh, <laughs> another kind of device to record stereo photos of actually uh, it's, it creates a bubble. You can actually kind of live inside of this bubble and see stereo, everything around you, a house, a room, uh, the area around. Dramatic, isn't it? So yeah. it's very dramatic. And then just to put some people into this, um, this is the team in uh, 2012 mm -hmm. uh, excavating at Ameri. But we also have on our table here some artifacts. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of these. We talked about the house, the four-room house, mm -hmm. and that village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these materials, starting from here, come either from, especially these three, and there's a couple more over mm -hmm. here, come from the house itself or the house next door. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about neighbors next door. And tell us the date again of uh, that house. We're talking s around 1200 BC. Mm -hmm. These were probably, the houses were probably built around 1230 or 1240 BC mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they, d they were destroyed. That's mm -hmm. why we have these mm -hmm. things. They mm -hmm. were destroyed, preserved as a time capsule. And again, um, relating it to the Bible would be the period of the Judges. The time yeah. of the Judges, mm -hmm. if you think about, in fact, this may be a site mentioned in the book of Judges, um, Tell Ella Mary. We've, we've speculated, you know, right. what have we, I mean, how have we done this? How have we gotten to at least a possibility of a biblical connection? Well, you mentioned the book, uh, the book of Judges, and in chapters 11 and 12 is the story about Jephthah, the Israelite judge. And uh, he grew up in Gilead, just to the north of here, but they chose him to fight the Ammonites. And the whole story is there. It mentions Heshbon that we've already talked about, the site that we first excavated. And then it talks about Abel Karamim. And uh, we think that it's possible that what we call today Omeri, the Arabic name, may be Abel Karamim, so that the site that we've been excavating perhaps is, uh, is related to that story Somehow there in Judges. Yeah, yeah. So we've had these connections with uh, Pharaoh 
<laughs> Tutmosis the third that right. might be one of these links to yeah. this connection too. Yeah. Found his seal so, impression. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So in fact two now. Two. So right. Identical. Yeah. Made from had to have been made from the same, same stamp. We, we can talk yeah. more about that mm -hmm. too. So what kind of a, what kind of a of a vessel is this one over here? That's a typical lamp, isn't it? Uh, why don't you show them uh, how it? you put the uh, wick uh, here and in this little niche and then it sucks up the oil and uh, burns there. So this is a fairly large one, typical of this period. And this was uh, put together because the pieces were broken when the house was destroyed. But we have the, the rim and all, all the way to we the do. bottom. We yeah, do. very good. And yeah. then let's just mention a couple more things here because yeah. these two will give us occasion to talk more about these artifacts. Most mm -hmm. of what we excavate at, um, at Tel el Amari, and maybe in most places mm -hmm. in Jordan, the West Bank, and Israel, mm -hmm. are domestic. Right. Um, right. And when you think about domestic, you think about preparing food, mm -hmm. you think about storing food, you mm -hmm. think about what you can do for your family. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about this. This isn't exactly from the house. We actually have a much larger one from the house. It's from a little bit later, but it's the same kind of thing. We have several things that are made from basalt, so this dark uh, volcanic rock. And this would be where uh, people would, pre would prepare their, their grain and grind the grain uh, using um, a millstone like so, right? Uh, something like this. Tell them about how uh, something like this is mentioned in the Bible. You know, if you think about um, something so common, so simple, mm -hmm. um, and we find these by the scores, right. by the hundreds, yeah. Um, yeah. mostly broken, but this mm -hmm. one is whole. It's a mm -hmm. very nice one. Mm -hmm. And we could pick it up fairly easily. Anybody mm -hmm. could. Mm -hmm. um, but a millstone has so many appearances in the Bible, and maybe I'll, I'll mention a couple, um, and maybe we'll have occasion to come back to some of them too. Um, millstones were your source for life. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have a millstone, your family was going gonna to, suffer. was not going to survive. <laughs> right. uh, and so when you, if you have somebody who owes you something, do not take the millstone. You can take some other vessel from the house mm -hmm. in pledge, mm -hmm. but you cannot take the millstone because that is the source of life. Mm -hmm. um, millstones were also used in the story Judges again, it's okay, mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. these biblical connections mm -hmm. with Judges, mm -hmm. uh, when Abimelech, the famous sort of non-king, the uh -huh. famous non-judge, <laughs> Uh, who died uh, because a woman dropped one of these on his head from the top of a tower at Thebes, uh -huh. an interesting name for a town, and it hit him on the head, and he said to his armor bearer, please, uh, draw your sword, thrust me through. I don't want it to be known that I was killed at the hands of a woman. Well, that's why we know about Abimelech, uh, and it's one of these. Um, so there's some other things, uh, biblical connections, all the way to the book of Revelation. We'll talk about some more of those. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's a small bowl right in front of you, Larry. Isn't that a beautiful example it of is. a stone bowl? Yeah. Tell, tell us about how we put it together. <laughs> see, see. <laughs> We have these wonderful stories of use in antiquity, right. and then we have stories about how we are doing our research uh -huh. as archaeologists. And what happened here, this was destroyed along with the, the destruction of the house. It was in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. It was one of those um, houses next door. And it had, it had broken apart when everything was destroyed. Um, but the way we do our work, uh -huh. we, we, we draw these lines, these square lines, and we separate fields from squares, from... Sort of an spaces. arbitrary... Very arbitrary. Yeah. And it just so happens that our line ran between two parts of this, these two pieces, and this one. <laughs> and so in 1992, these two pieces were discovered in one field, field B, mm -hmm. in, uh, no, in field A, mm -hmm. and then in 1996, um, uh, 90, uh, maybe 98, this other piece was found, and until about a week and a half ago, well, until <laughs> this, just this last fall, uh -huh. um, didn't have any idea they belonged together. But the person who's working with them in our lab at La Sierra um, said, I've seen this shape before, there's got to be another piece. She found them, put them together. That's a really a good archaeologist when you have that it uh, is. knowledge it about uh, pieces that, that, that are terrific. stone, put yeah. it together. Yeah. Yeah. Got that memory. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe one or two more, uh, Larry. Now, what, um, what's this? Doug? This would be a pounding stone, mm -hmm. um, uh, or pounder, we call it for short. Mm -hmm. 
men thought that these were uh, sling stones. I mean, uh -huh. We think about war and so on. Right. Women tend to think about household and what you do every day in the kitchen. And uh, it's actually due in large part to women archaeologists to say, let's put another set of eyes on these things. Mm -hmm. And these were most often used for pounders in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, and you find a smooth edge to it here, easy to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. You can pound uh, either grain or, mm -hmm. uh, or you can grind it this way. Mm -hmm. And so you end mm -hmm. up with these spoons. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone came along and needed a sling stone and found one of these, they'd use it for sure, that. Sure. So these are multi-purpose yeah. right. uh, implements. Right, so right, right. And this here? And the small hand grinder. Um, this is a bit of an unusual one. This is a black limestone. Um, most of these are basalt, like this, mm -hmm. and they grind better. But this is so smooth, so this has been used in a similar way. So you want to, when you want to make something especially fine, if you're doing flour, you're using this. Mm -hmm. Got mm -hmm. your wheat. Mm -hmm. But if you want something really fine, you're going to use a hand grinder, something like that. Now this, this is uh, ceramic. That has an interesting design on it. This is correct. Um, we have lots of what we call figurines. Mm -hmm. And this one is the torso of a female figurine, mm -hmm. of a pregnant female. <laughs> um, these are found all over the place. They're found in Israel. They're found in, in the Ammonite, Moabite, uh, Edomite territories. And they were used probably as good luck charms mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. help in childbirth. Probably, not probably, the most dangerous time in anybody's life was childbirth. Mm -hmm. And women did uh, had several children. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to have something like this in your hand while giving birth was an important thing. Not only do you have uh, human figurines, right. but animal you have ones animal too. ones too. Yeah. So we have this one. This is a small head. And if one turns this way, you can kind of see the, uh, the eye. These mm -hmm. are button eyes. Camel, um, <laughs> horse. Uh, Sometimes archaeologists don't know. Normally when they don't know, they say it's got to be religious. Um, but we, we try to avoid that so Now, th this is a round one with a hole in the middle. What would yeah, that be? Yeah, and we'll just take a, mi a couple seconds with this. This is a spindle whorl used for um, making wool out of, uh, making yarn out of wool. So these are used, spun on a stick and so on. So I think, uh, let's save that one until okay. next time. We'll okay. come back to Very it good. and okay. uh, bring this to a close. Okay. Thank you, Larry, for helping us think about these biblical connections with an ancient site that you and I have become so well acquainted with, and it's just been a pleasure to talk to you about it. And thank you to all of you as well for being part of excavating the Bible. Um, we want to make sure that uh, this has contributed to uh, something to your mind and something to your heart, food for your soul as well as for your mind. Um, and we want to welcome you next time as well. Thank you so much for joining us.